I had quite a different talk in mind uh, for today for you, but I was exposed to something that uh, concurrent with the grant with Blue Cross Blue Shield that you just saw was the engagement of a technology solutions company called IQWare. Now, what, when I initially examined this company, I, I was asked if it was at all possible, could I incorporate this talk into this talk, a demonstration of the technology that will be available to you if you choose to provide MTM and disease services in the state of Tennessee. And so uh, the people from IQWare, uh, Micah and Zach and several others and myself have been meeting regularly since I was engaged to do this talk to produce a demonstration for you of what the technology will be doing if you choose to take care of patients. Now in my more, more than 30 years of helping develop software and looking at companies who were working on pharmaceutical care, remember that? And now MTM services and how to integrate that into your practice, you're about to see a demonstration of a software that will run on all of the iPads and any other mobile device. It's a thin client application and it's so thin they say it's an anorexic client application. And it will also have Department of Defense level of security to protect your patient and your confidentiality. So what I'm gonna do is break out and do a demonstration now. And what you'll see here is something, now uh, raise your hand if you have uh, a first data bank clinical support system in your pharmacy system. Okay, this application comes with first data bank. Raise your hand if you're using a Metaspan based decision support. All right, well, what you're going to see here is that it has an offline drug assessment tool that on your iPad, anywhere in your pharmacy connected, you can use for doing uh, any number of checks on therapy when you're away from your pharmacy system. If you get a telephone call or if you're at a party and someone says, oh, you're a pharmacist? You can now reach into your pocket and go, yes, I am. <laughs> now. The ability to also do RIMS is a, another thing that the program has. Now what I'm going to select from this opening screen where I have uh, built seven patients uh, on my particular account, I'm going to click an add new patient button. When I do that, I'm going to have the opportunity to start manually typing in information setting up a new patient profile and record. However, you mentioned, you've heard that the uh, material to be able to use speech recognition, how many of you remember me demonstrating that in the past? Okay, I can now with about 160 words a minute and 99% accuracy and I can hand you the headset with no uh, with nothing at all, I can pull up and be able to start inputting information and impressions about a patient in that uh, particular way. We said, how, how many of you like typing in data fields on new patients? I didn't think so. Well, we approached, approached uh, our friends at QS1 and we, we asked them, um, would it be possible for them to export if you have an existing patient uh, on your system with all the drugs and diseases and any other uh, data fields that you have right there, would it be possible for you to download from the pharmacy management system the ability to get those data and import it directly into the IQWare MTM application? Now. It's doing this by a file that you'll be able to select and then it will take it from your pharmacy management system and load it directly into your application. When we looked at who in here, when it comes to doing MTM, uh, feels like you are just a little rusty on the structure of providing MTM, raise your hand. Okay. Well, when we were building this application, 
we said uh, we wanted to prov provide that structure and to provide the documentation of the care provided um, so that it was a being it was happening as a byproduct of rendering that care okay here we go now this is where you would manually or with your speech recognition enter material and you can see uh, you would gather some of the traditional information but there's a, additional spaces for things that uh, may be important to help the decision support this is the QS1 button right now to import these data. I click that one import patient and it brings into my application the information uh, for this purpose. I'm going to now have that populated information. I'm gonna tell the program to add this patient as a MTM services patient. And it will take James Christensen and add that individual in and it says do you want to start a new patient session I'll click yes and click OK and then here it takes me to the case summary page and any clinical workup any MTM process and any need to do disease state management starts with an assessment moves to goal setting uh, does things like planning implementation monitoring evaluation now, here's where we're going to look at some of the structure of how that all works. And I'm gonna pop into uh, assessment momentarily. And this is Micah and uh, Zach's work to take the standards and harmonize and blend them from MTM and disease state management. Now, this is the structure for those of you who said this is not in your head and something that you do currently enough. So we have told you line by line what it is that needs to take place to provide the workup. Now, a clock has started, and the reimbursement for your services is running behind this. And one other thing that we have here is if you want to know what would be some good questions to ask patients to make sure that you gather in this information, I can bring up a help box, and it will bring up a dialogue to give you further structure to um, perform the step that we're in. So in this case, I'll check the assessment boxes and click OK. Now, it takes me back to the summary screen, and what occurs in the assessment box is the documentation of what's been done, and it places a check mark if I have done all of the steps appropriately. But if I click on the billable actions, you'll see that the MTM and DSME codes that are associated with doing the work have already placed a $50 reimbursement for the disease state and two $45 reimbursements for a total of $140.47 at this point. If I go into uh, looking at the major sections of the rest of the application, we have the ability to add things such as the uh, hospital or other affiliations that this patient has. We have the ability to come across and look at uh, general information. And here's something that got imported from the pharmacy management system. It was the patient's weight and height. And in this case, a BMI calculation is performed and you have the ability to look at the structure of the BMI and the, and the formula that it was used, that was used to do it. And you have the ability for the, um, the actual um, additional charts and references to be accessed from this point. Proceeding along, the history lets us look at uh, diseases and uh, some ability to control the laboratories and allergies and other uh, screens that are relating to uh, immunization. And after having done the assessment, I know that this patient is going to need to have a lipid panel and is due for that. So if I click in the labs tab and click add, I'm able to come up to the test that we are going to provide to the patient, select the lipid panel, indicate to the software that this is a billable service and click OK. I also see that this patient is eligible and needs to have an influenza vaccination. So I click add immunization. 
I come down to the influenza vaccination, say that it's billable, and then I'm prompted to also add the administration fee, which is the Medicare uh, category for providing the administration of the influenza uh, vaccination and administration is checked. And then I also say that it's billable and I say that it's okay. Now keep in mind that because I've instituted that test and that immunization, that the billable actions are being summarized for what the reimbursement will be in this process. As I go into my medication area, now this is gonna take a little bit because all of those drugs that were in put on mass right now are being analyzed by the first data bank drug utilization review module to determine whether there's any action that's going to be necessary here. And in fact, it did, uh, it did discover that there were some problems. So I can come into my resolve these drug alerts and this medication action plan allows me to document what needs to be done. If I click on the, the two moderate interactions that are in this green box, I'm able to um, select which ones need to be addressed and go forward and say that I can look at the monographs if I'd like to see what the detail is for those interactions. And I can either say no action needed or I can say that the pharmacist needs to do an intervention and if I select that, then it launches me into a documentation screen that brings me uh, the procedure for, for documenting this intervention. And in this case, we have a drug interaction pre-checked and my uh, situation is resolved. My action, and here's where I can put in a follow-up to check at a three-month visit, or uh, I can do things like communicating and counseling with my patient to let them know that I'm aware that this is uh, occurring and uh, be able to um, document that using my speech recognition again. All right, and then uh, when I am done with the clinical tools, I can go in to uh, my documentation section and if I'm going to communicate something with a prescriber, any of the actions that have been done generates language or verbiage for the report either by email or by a letter if we want to keep the prescriber involved in the loop. And coming back to the case summary, uh, we've done a couple more actions so we can go from here and see that we now have the laboratories and the immunizations are in the process and our total uh, of billable actions is up to $201.79. Now, in going through each of the clinical workup sections and making sure that all the required uh, boxes are checked, this last one needs to be checked, and I didn't get a green check mark in there because I left one step off in the assessment. Now it's checked. If I show you that the complexity of all of the others are much less for doing goal settings, but again, it's suggesting things that you may want to do as part of your goal setting. And after you've considered them, just check them off that you've done it. Of course, I'm going faster than if you actually used it to handle each one. Clicking OK, that completes the goal setting stage. The planning stage has only three prompts for you. And some of these, as you'll see on the next two, are considered to be optional because your implementation would vary according to the patient's uh, particular case. So here we have an optional. I'm selecting the required and populating that I have considered each of those and taken the appropriate action, but I'll leave optional off. And the final one of monitoring and evaluation has also some additional options and structure for you and what you're going to do up on scheduling on the calendar that's built into the application, a follow-up appointment where you'll reassess the patient as this is describing in here. 
And so I've checked off all of those. So my structure has now been prompted and I have one more required area. Then I'll click OK. Now with the case summary screen showing check marks in all of the areas and all of the actual steps that were performed having been caught, I'm able to um, go into my close the case and bill options. Now at this point, what's the name of the same of the form that all healthcare providers are using to provide for their evaluation management and, and provider services? The CMS 1500. Well, we asked for Micah and Zach to take this case and to extract from the software and populate what it would take to send the reimbursement to the uh, payer for this actual services that were provided. Right now, we did that by capturing a PDF that was filled out uh, by handwriting, and you'll see it come up on the screen right now, the 1500 CMS. And the next development phase of the software will be for this to, uh, to do that digitally and to be able to transmit it electronically as you do with your other claims. Now, the last step in what I'm doing in my demo is to close down that form, and it's going to take you to an accounting page where you'll be able to see the status of your uh, claims that you have placed, be able to see those that are paid, those that are pending, and those that may have had a, uh, a form with a field left undone that were rejected that need to be modified to be able to, uh, to correct the action. That's where we are with the demo so far. What do you think? A lot of work is into it so far. And what I can tell you about working with the IQWare people is this software is so powerful. And the people that are developing it, if we give them a suggestion, it's not, we'll be back to you in a month. But usually, I get an email by the afternoon. All of that that you requested is in there working right now. They've been a tremendous group to work with. Your association has selected uh, this solutions provider, and they've done a lot of due diligence and looked at what's out there in the market. And uh, I can tell you with as much work as we've gotten to get the functionality where it is now, I'm very confident by January that the uh, debugging and other things that you don't want to participate in uh, will be smooth and, and operating by that time.